welcome friends in Chi, both loyal and new. I mean that there are people on the line right now who we've known for years. And um, some of you are energy medicine people, some of you are stress management people, some of you are health and vitality and fun and social connection and health politics people. Notice that that's uh, Michelle Obama down there in the corner doing qi, uh, Tai Chi in China. Uh, I'm going to introduce myself, and um, I'm the founder and the director of the Institute of Integral Qigong and Tai Chi, and we train people to be Qigong and Tai Chi teachers. So that's a big deal. That's a an amazing honor, and we've been doing it for uh, pretty close to 20 years, and we've trained uh, almost 2,000 people. And so these are some of my credentials. I've written a couple of books. I've been to China many times. I'm a doctor of Chinese medicine. So um, I have the opportunity to have looked at Qigong and Tai Chi from many perspectives. Now I want to introduce the uh, faculty of the Institute of Integral Qigong and Tai Chi, which we call IIQTC. And these are the people who have uh, been not only through our 200 hour teacher training, but they've also been through additional training in uh, to, to become a senior trainer. And when we do our level one and two and three, we typically have uh, myself and other faculty involved. So now let's launch into uh, be thinking of this uh, slide presentation as a reflection on either practicing Qigong or what it is that we teach teachers to teach regarding Qigong and Tai Chi. Uh, and reflections on the science and so forth. So anybody who maybe isn't interested in being a Qigong and Tai Chi teacher might still be on this webinar. So uh, be taking this information in, not just as information about how to become a teacher, but how to, uh, how to become uh, a practitioner. And off we go. So there are three foundation principles to the practice, the three treasures. Um, and body focus, mind focus, and breath focus, these three treasures are, come across all traditions. So think to yourself, yoga fits on the three treasures. Well, how about doing the hula? Uh, the traditional healing dances of the Hawaiians, the body, the breath, and the mind. Yoga, body, breath, and mind. Tai Chi, body, breath, and mind. So bring your attention to this now and uh, lengthen your spine. Lift your head up on top and relax uh, deeply. Shift your breath so the three treasures are notice your posture and modify it. Notice your breath and modify it. Notice your mind and modify the mind. So to start a practice or in the middle of the day when you're in your car to uh, institute a practice while you're driving. Now you might think, well, I've heard I shouldn't operate heavy equipment uh, when I'm practicing, but actually think of it, you're in a car. Do you want to adjust your posture? Of course you do. Uh, is it fair to adjust your breath? Absolutely. Uh, is it dangerous to clear your mind and pay attention to what's happening in the present? Well, absolutely. We want to be alert and present when we're driving. So that's what we call three treasures. 
That's what we teach everybody that we ever teach to practice. And we teach everybody that we teach to be teachers to use these three treasures as the foundation. Now, this next slide that I'm going to show you is um, uh, to, to give you some uh, access. Uh, sometimes when you're on a, uh, when you're on a webinar, you, you know, you drift around, you go to your browser, you click here and there. So I'm going to give you some links that you can uh, think about uh, clicking. The easiest one is iiqtc.org. So while we're, while we're having this conversation, um, feel free to go to iiqtc.org. Feel free to go to youtube.com slash iiqtc. Feel free to go to feelthechi.com uh, and, and go to the left-hand navigation bar and go down the, uh, to the blog and feel free to go to taichieasy.org. Place your questions, your Q&A questions in the chat box, although I will be asking you to raise your hands. And because I'm here by myself doing this all solo, it's very possible that I won't see your question. And I, I'm just so sorry for that. And then what you can do is um, uh, if you go to, I didn't put uh, Facebook on here, but you can go to Facebook and look up uh, myself, Roger, J-A-H-N-K-E, or you can look up Institute of Integral Qigong and Tai Chi and leave your questions there. And I will do my best over the next couple of days to to help you to find those. The easiest way, the easiest way to get access to the replay of this uh, program that we're doing now is to join our free membership site. And um, at the end of our talk today, I'm going to give you the address for that. Uh, but if you go to IIQTC, Dot org and look around, you'll find the free membership site. And when you sign on to the free membership site, um, we will then respond by sending you an announcement uh, ab about this talk that we're doing today so that you can uh, replay the recording if you want to. So these are the two events that we're enrolling now. And so if you go to iiqtc.org and go to the calendar, it's on the left-hand side, calendar, click, go through to uh, the Multiversity in uh, Santa Cruz, amazing, Redwoods, gorgeous, or on the East Coast, Kripalu, beautiful Berkshire Mountains. So I'm not going to talk too much about specific training events um, because all that information is at the calendar. When we get to the Q&A, certainly you can ask questions there and I'm happy to answer them. But let's keep going. So the second set of principles that we make a big deal out of in our trainings and train you to teach others to pay attention to are the three treasures plus massage. That's called the four baskets of practice. The four baskets of practice are body practice, self-applied massage practice, breath practice, and mindfulness practice. And this is kind of like an essential foundation of Qigong and Tai Chi. And so this body of information supports learners, people who are learning, the people who <clears throat> you as a teacher or a practice leader would have in your class. It's a way to our, assist our graduates in articulating and promoting the work that they do. So in other words, when we go to social service agencies, school systems, the military, the Veterans Administration, uh, we 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 uh, support you 
in articulating what it is that you have to offer in terms of the four baskets of practice because it's very, very practical. Um, <clears throat> when you use the word Qigong, people are going to want to know what the definition of that word is, and it's not that easy to define. Whereas if you say mind-body practice and the four baskets of practice, everybody knows what a mind and a body is, because we all have those. And when you explain the four baskets of practice, they will typically say, oh, wow, we need that. You know, we need to work with our posture, our movement, our, <clears throat> our headaches for the, with, the, with the massage, headaches and so forth. Oh, yeah, we read it in, you know, we read in Oprah mag magazine how important the breath is. Oh, mindfulness. Oh, my gosh, we have to have mindfulness. Mindfulness. Uh, we went to a conference, and our professional conference uh, is alerting us to the fact that mindfulness is very important. So this is a really major component of um, all of these trainings. Then these principles, these nine principles, we can do them now. Sink and rise expand and open, breathe purposefully, relax, find your ground, it's called rooting, <clears throat> become aware of the Tai Chi pole. The Tai Chi pole is in that picture over on the right side of the slide, it is that vertical, starts with the blue at the bottom, the red in the middle and the white at the top, that is the Tai Chi pole. Learn how to weight shift so that you are uh, able to navigate in all environments. Uh, one of the biggest wastes of money in, in healthcare, which I really don't even like calling healthcare, is um, falls and falls prevention and balance enhancement. The balance enhancement of the body becomes balance enhancement of the being becomes balance enhancement of the aspect of ourself, which we call the mental emotional self, or what the Chinese call the heart mind. Now, these are very powerful um, principles. Initiate from the center means not only moving the body from the center, but also initiate anything that you do from your uh, essence, from your essential self. Excuse me while I clear my throat. <clears throat> I hope you're hydrating. So what is new era science finding? And uh, to what extent is that linking into Qigong and Tai Chi? Well, all these, this, this entire list is what new science is finding, and it's all related to Qigong and Tai Chi. So the longevity and the DNA rehabilitation, having to do with the telomeres and so forth, disease prevention, health promotion, wellness, self-initiated healing. Why do I say the placebo there? Because the placebo is something that you can actually turn on, on purpose. Uh, it's not something that you necessarily need to be tricked into, as they do in science, but the self-initiated placebo, everything from neuroscience and neuroplasticity, brain, brain plasticity, genetics, telomere, the sustainability of the telomere is equ equivalent to the sustainability of your capacity to replicate cells. So imagine as you... Uh, continue through time, how is your brain replicating cells? How are your eyeballs and your retina replicating cells? How is your liver replicating cells? How is your heart replicating cells? How are damaged cells being replaced by healthy cells? How is the immune system replacing its cells, which are going around and tracking down um, disease factors? How do, we, how do we make all that happen? Uh, and then it gets into the whole idea of the human energy field and the fact that it's impossible not to have a 
an energy field because of the presence of ions in the body. Ions produce magnetic fields. So you can't not have a magnetic field, no matter what anybody has ever said to you. Um, it is impossible for a human being to not have a magnetic field. Why? Well, because uh, we are filled with ions that are doing what ions do. And in the presence of ion functionality, a field is created. What about the quantum field? What about uh, the size of the uh, universe? How does the universe work? And what is our place in it? These are all of grand interest to people who practice Qigong and Tai Chi because uh, if we develop a sensibility about who we might be, because it's going to be impossible to figure out who we are. So if we can develop a sensibility, a sensibility about who we might be, then we have the opportunity to develop a shall we say, a way, uh, like in the Tao Te Ching, a, a way of being, a way of living. And so uh, practicing Qigong and Tai Chi becomes a, a portal to the way. Um, if I may, please, uh, somebody, anybody out there who somehow got unmuted, if you could go to the mute button and mute yourself, uh, that would be great. And then this whole concept of a higher self, and then finally this idea of having eternal aspect of being. Uh, it's fantastic. It's amazing. It's, wow. I mean, okay. And then, so these are the areas of science that are, that are applicable to Qigong and Tai Chi. And then ask yourself this question, what does it mean teach what you aspire to know teach what you aspire to know what it means is that instead of having to go to somebody else's class and learn what they are aspiring to know you can be the leader of a class that supports you in understanding more deeply what you aspire to know it's very powerful. You might think, well, I don't know enough to be a teacher. Well, that may or may not be true, but get some training, be brave, be bold. And we have something called the enthusiastic citizen. That's somebody who has no training whatsoever and is just filled with the impulse to be supportive in the world. And if you're on this call and you think to yourself, I'd love to go to a training, but I just can't. Well, then I am now declaring that uh, for some of you who, you know, long to be uh, offering something in your community to, to, to just go for it, because there's nobody, there's hardly anybody in your community who understands these things. And just from what we talk about at this, on this call, there is so much that you will know and you have Google and you have YouTube and you know what I mean. Uh, many of you feel that you want to learn more and that's beautiful. And we've trained, like I said, almost 2000 people. And many of you feel like there's some value to certification and we certify you at the end of each of our trainings to, um, you know, with a, uh, something that says you're certified in case you need that when you go to the social service agencies the school systems the corporations the veterans administration your church or your temple because all those places are getting into the idea of mindfulness and ac action in prayer and action prayer and action um, stress mastery Self mastery and all these things are Qi Gong and Tai Chi are very powerful for all these things. So, Chinese uh, Qi Gong masters had insights about all of the things that we're talking about a really long time ago. How did they do that? Uh, we'll talk much more about that in the training, of course. But 
at the bottom of it is this thing called chi, the common denominator across all of the self-improvement type ideas in the Chinese tradition are based on chi. Art is based on chi. Science is based on chi. Uh, nature and the nature of nature is based on the exchange of energies between bodies in the universe, like planets, and suns, like our sun. And the interaction of the sun and the planet comes together and it makes you. You are a, you are a uh, reflection of how the, the space of the cosmos and whatever it is, including the dark matter and the uh, antimatter and, and all the stuff that science is trying to figure out, and the earth itself with its minerals, the water that it produces, the food that rises up out of the ground, which is then ingested into our mother's being and into our being and then into our own digestive system. So all of that is based on the concept of energy. And so then we basically train teachers about the four levels of chi. The physiological level, uh, there's a, a lot to know about ions. We just talked about that. There's a lot to know about ERGS, ERGS, which is the foundation of metabolic energy. There's a lot to know about internal energy, which is the, uh, again, the ions and the uh, functional capacity that is uh, discharged along the um, neurological pathways, uh, utilizing the interfa interface between chemistry and a kind of electricity within the body. And then <clears throat> the magnetic field, which we talked about, which you can't have a, uh, you can't have a, a live human with functional uh, uh, internal electronics, call that ions to keep it simple, and then um, not have a magnetic field. So we do have a magnetic field and that magnetic field can become coherent and that coherence is what is at the foundation of functional transformation through the process of the qi, uh, according to the Chinese, the qi supporting organic function and cellular function and uh, even mental function. And then, of course, there's the whole concept of the quantum field, which is not uh, limited to the magnetic field. It is the we don't even know. It's the part of ourself that uh, isn't just local. It's not the body and it's not the mental emotional self. It's the aspect of ourself which is trans-dimensional and may be eternal in some way. We, we, we just don't know. So there's a lot just there in that whole idea. Of, um, the energetics of human beings. Okay, so now let's take a little break into the q and A. I'm going to stop sharing. I, I noticed that the um, the muting situation has deconstructed, so I'm going to mute everyone. All right, so. Now, raise your hands if you have a question, and I'm going to, okay, here we go. Top question is, question, okay, so it is not um, reasonable for someone to actually take time out to come to a training. Um, Yeah, so, so what do you do about that? Well, number one is uh, at the end of this, uh, I'm going to give the link for the free membership site, which has a lot of uh, video material, a lot of written material, 
and a lot of audio material. And so one of the ways to learn more is to, uh, to check into the, um, to, to that, to the free membership site. Then don't forget to go to YouTube and put in uh, IIQTC, and there's a whole channel there of information. In addition, uh, we have a program, it's a video program, which is very thorough, and it's called um, Healer Within Medical Qigong Library. Healer Within Medical Qigong Library. So if you go to uh, iiqtc.org and um, <clears throat> scroll down, you'll find a purple banner that says Healer Within Medical Qigong Library. And we've got it set up for a significant disc. It's not, it's not an inexpensive program. Um, it's thorough. It took years to produce. I wrote The Healer Within in, 19, uh, in the 1990s. It was published in the late 1990s. And at that time, we said we should create a video program on this. And <laughs> we finally got this video program in order enough to bring it to you a couple of years ago. So, you know, it took us 20 years. We worked on it the whole time. So, um, you know, sorry that it has a uh, fee, but remember there's YouTube is free and membership site is free. Okay, I am scrolling. Oh, good. Uh, I have a good friend who works for us at the IIQTC, her name is Rhonda, and it's, I got a note here that says, Rhonda is in the house. <laughs> so um, Rhonda, please, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Rhonda is gonna help out to, um, to get the, uh, the URLs for the trainings. So one of these trainings is happening in March in California at a beautiful place called uh, 1440 Multiversity. 1440 Multiversity, wow, what does that mean? <laughs> well, first of all, we live in a multiverse. So a university is about the universe. A multiversity is about the multiverse. 1440 is the number of minutes in a day. So how can we be conscious for 14, for, for all day? Well, we can learn how to, to sleep, purposefully, and we can learn how to be awake purposefully. We can learn how to be in relationships purposefully, and we can learn how to do our part in the world purposefully. And we can then go to the business of learning how to accept that which we cannot control purposefully. And we can, with purpose and intent, train ourselves to help others. So uh, Rhonda, thank you so much if you're still there to, uh, to, uh, to post those. And um, okay, here comes, ding, ding, ding. Looking for questions. I don't see hands raised yet. Okay, we can hear you, yes. Uh, thank you for the advice, uh, Mark, about the slideshow. Um, it, it's, I did that, and this is what we ended up with. Yes, the raise your hand option is in the participants section. Uh, thank you. Somebody says, uh, you know, somebody needs to, to mute. Yeah. Anytime you are not speaking, please put yourself on mute. I'm looking for questions here. Well, it looks like we've answered all the questions. Um, oh, here we go. Now, R. Gridley, I am hoping to be able to talk to you.
Okay, R. Gridley, I am unmuting you. Uh, you'll have to unmute yourself. Do you know how to do that? We'll give R. Gridley a moment to uh, figure out how to unmute himself or herself. Uh, and if not, then we will have to go on. Our Gridley, it's down to the lower left of your screen. Okay, so R, we're going to have to go on unless you write me a quick message. Technology is fun. Technology doesn't ever work, doesn't always work. Sometimes people are on Zoom for the first time and, you know, that just gets complex. Okay, so we're going to head back to Okay, so somebody, um, hey, uh, Valerie, can you hear me? <clears throat> oh, good. Will you put your thumb up? Apparently, you can hear me, right? All right. Now, I'm going to share my screen again, and uh, I want you to tell me if you can see my screen. You saw my screen just a moment ago? Okay. On we go. So <clears throat> why is there such a need for Qigong and Tai Chi teachers? Why is there such a need for Qigong and Tai Chi teachers? And the answer is because our society wastes 70% or more. Now, <clears throat> see the second statistic, excuse me. <clears throat> See this second statistic here that says eight out of nine causes of disease are preventable? Well, that's, that's close to 85%. So we have 80%, we have 70%, and we have 80% of disease that's preventable. Now, the amount of money that we spend as a culture annually to, to treat diseases is three trillion dollars, three trillion dollars. That's so many zeros, I don't even know how many count it, but it's a lot. And I'll tell you this, it's more than a bailout, the largest government bailout that ever happened in the history of the world was not that large. And we do that every year. And one more thing about this is that um, all the war, all the war that we've been paying for since the year 2000, cost has cost in total a little more than three trillion dollars so that's 12 years uh, seven 15 years of of expensive horrifying war activities that don't cost as much as one year of medical intervention it's 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 um it's embarrassing it's tragic it's ridiculous it shouldn't be happening now who's going to change this who's going to change this well it's not going to be them if you know what i mean um okay i i know a lot of doctors and they're all wonderful people they're caught in a horrifying system i know a lot of people who have discomfort in their lives and think, feel like they need doctors Maybe they do or maybe they don't. But I know for sure, because I've been in this business for a really long time, that people can heal themselves. More than 70% of he people can prevent their diseases. So, like that. 
I mean, if it was just about well-being and if it was just about personal uh, productivity, that's huge. And we have the science to prove that Qigong and Tai Chi are safe and effective. And this article, which uh, I'm the lead author on, and Linda Larkey's second author is one of our IIQTC teacher training graduates. And uh, this is what's called the evidence base. The evidence base for the safety and efficiency of Qigong and Tai Chi is, has been written. There's just no argument left about how these are weird practices from ancient cultures. These are interesting practices from ancient cultures which have immense relevance in our, in our lives today. Check this out. Three of the most, three of the largest wastes of money uh, treating disease, uh, diseases that are preventable, are heart disease, falling down and hurting yourself, and everything about neuropsychological uh, uh, challenges, including uh, depression, anxiety, stress, uh, high, super high levels of stress like PTSD, and more. And these numbers show how many studies have been done to find that these preventable diseases can be positively affected by Qigong and Tai Chi. So the rationale for becoming a Qigong and Tai Chi teacher is high. And so some of the benefits of becoming a teacher are for yourself because it becomes a part of your health. It's a beautiful step towards personal discipline. Livelihood can happen. M many of the teachers that we've uh, trained are actually making a living teaching. And then for the learners, for the people in your community, the people that you will serve, these populations are at risk. And most of them do not know that they're allowed to heal themselves. You know, I mean, I want to cry right now. It's, it's just so sad that we live in a society that claims to be the most sophisticated society in the world. And it's not. It's not. And who's going to fix this? It's not going to be them. It's going to be us. So for society, local and global, we are training people in other countries. We are training people to train people in other countries. The money and the politics that are associated with how do you get to peace and inclusivity? How do you, how do, you do that? Somebody somewhere has to say, I want to listen. I don't just want to shout. I want to listen. Now, how can we learn to be quiet? Now, how can we learn to respect each other? You know, don't you want to be a part of that? I mean, that's so powerful. So who are the people that we train? Uh, physicians, acupuncturists, nurses, everybody. We, we've worked with retired business people. Uh, one of our highest numbers is librarians, people who are already in public places. A lot to do with um, people who are uh, social workers and people who work in um, agencies and organizations, including the military and veterans, to, um, to support healing, to support the 85 to 90 percent of people who could prevent their diseases to prevent their diseases. And so hospitals, clinics, social service agencies, even country clubs like golf clubs, yoga centers, spas. It's amazing how, you know, out of the 
couple of thousand people that we've trained, it's people coming from all walks of life. So if you think to yourself, I don't have the background, just think again, because it doesn't work like that. Some of the most prof profoundly inspiring, talented teachers that we have trained um, have no background whatsoever. In fact, I actually prefer to, to work with people who no, have no background because they tend to be less full of it about what should be on the curriculum. They tend, people who have no training, tend to be interested in whatever shows up. People with lots of training tend to be judgmental. Sorry. So what are the keys to the, to the value of training with the IIQTC? International credibility, recognized leadership, authentic roots. I've been to China 10 times. I'm a doctor of Chinese medicine. I've written books about these things that are reflective of the, the just the beautiful origins of these ideas a uh, sound uh, curriculum that we've been refining for years. We, treat you, we teach you how to be a teacher. We don't just teach you to practice Qigong. We teach you how to be a teacher. The IIQTC participates in research. We publish. Our graduates publish. We have a strong uh, community of professionals who we're, we're having a reunion coming up in uh, April, we train people to be leaders and we have online resources. At the Institute of Qigong and tai, in, uh, Integral Qigong and Tai Chi, we learn to practice and, and learn to teach. And um, there's, there's another slide that shows some of, of all of that. But right down here it says, as, and much more, see the curriculum at iiqtc.org. So be sure you write that down, iiqtc.org. Uh, safe, to, we teach you to be safe and effective. We teach you to modify practices for special situations. We teach you to initiate, manage workshops and classes and private sessions. That many of the people that we've trained do not teach weekly classes. They teach private lessons and they teach workshops. IIQTC resources uh, help you to manage and market your business and calculate your cult of your uh, your compensation. So, in a portion of our level one, which is coming up right away, we talk about business and we talk about fees and we talk about. Uh, reaching out and how to promote and all of that. Web-based support. Remember, free membership site. Get on that free membership site right away because there's more information there than we've shared here. And you can um, dig in a little deeper. We have a Chi Family, we call it the Chi Family Facebook page. It's got six or 700 people that we've graduated having a dialogue about their business and about the practice of Qigong. We have, uh, you can see a little note there, for students and graduates, there's a whole section that our graduates have access to on the IIQTC webpage that is how to start your business and how to calculate your charges and ideas about um, music to play, ideas about uh, how to... Um, do promotion. And then we have our graduate symposium, which is coming up soon. Level one <clears throat> is, uh, I'm going to give you just a brief on all three levels. Level one is focused on Qigong. It is uh, all Qigong, is everything Qigong. And it's deep and rich and amazing and fun. And of course, when you go to these trainings, you meet people who are of shared values, and when you share values with other people, how much more fun is that than trying to share your values with people who don't share them? <laughs> I was just at the Esalen Institute, 
and uh, you know the bonding <clears throat> that happens among people who come from all around the world. There's actually somebody there from uh, Europe who came to Esalen for just that class, five days. The amount of bonding that happens in those events is in incredible. And so it's not just the curriculum and it's not just the teaching. It's also being with people who share your values. <clears throat> and um, so some of the things that we teach, there's a another slide on this. Learn to teach the Taoist medicine wheel, the seven precious gestures, which are kind of transcendental. And then we also learn healer within uh, practices, which is uh, Bujang Qigong and the nine phases of integral, integral Qigong and connective tissue transform, aim, transformation and Guolin's walking practice. So we teach you a lot of Qigong practices, but in a context where you're learning how to teach them with each other. And you are enabled, encouraged, informed, and inspired to teach following each level. So this is not the kind of thing where you have to wait until you've graduated from 200 hours. We want you to go back and teach what you aspire to know. The easiest way to learn how to be a teacher is to, to be a teacher. Easiest way to ride a bike, fall off. Easiest way to learn ice skating, fall down. Easiest way to be a teacher, do it. Just get out there and do it. Level two is everything about Tai Chi, except for the hardest part. So that's why we call it the essence of Tai Chi. And uh, I won't linger here because we don't have a, a level two training uh, available right now. But um, Tai Chi, let, let's just talk about this. What is the difference between Qigong and Tai Chi? The main difference is the effect on the body and the mind. Qigong affects the body and the mind by soothing, by soothing. And, you know, we talk much more about this in the trainings, of course, whereas the Tai Chi affects the body and the mind by increasing brain plasticity. Because when something is as novel as Tai Chi, Qigong is novel, but it's more accessible. Most forms of Qigong are more accessible. Tai Chi, even a short little bit of Tai Chi, requires more brain. And it also requires to calm down. So Qigong is for soothing the nervous system and turning on the medicine within and Tai Chi is for rewiring the brain and maximizing um, our endurance, uh, both physically and intellectually and emotionally, to learn new things. That's the foundation of brain plasticity. Then in the third level, we do what's called alchemy. And I won't linger here because of the time, but alchemy is uh, the uh, sort of uh, creating the highest level of internal elixirs that you can possibly imagine. The medicine within becomes the golden elixir. Now, how do we produce the golden elixir of longevity? And even what the Chinese call immortality, which means having a connection with your eternal self. Immortality does not mean living forever in the body that you have today, so you don't have to worry about that. It, immortality is having a relationship with the aspect of yourself, which is typically ignored, which may be eternal. So, you know, we're pretty close to the end here. So, um, you know, as a teacher, we're going to give you all this knowledge of the ancients. We're going to give you all this knowledge of contemporary science. We're going to give you all this knowledge of uh, how to approach uh, 
bringing your your skills to agencies and organizations who will hire you. We're going to support you if you're an entrepreneurial type person and developing an entrepreneurial type practice. So you can either have a entrepreneurial teaching practice where you find people to be in your class, or you can be employed by agencies and organizations, school systems, churches, temples, the Veterans Administration. The Veterans Administration is just waiting for you to knock on their door. How do I know? Well, we've been working with the Veterans Administration, and their definition of a Qigong and Tai Chi teacher is someone who has around 60 hours of training. Well, our level one is 65 hours. And so you can go to any VA and have a pretty positive experience of presenting yourself as either a volunteer or a contractor. So point being, um, and if you graduate from the, if I don't, I hope you don't mind if I kind of blow the horn of raise the flag, beat the drum of the IIQTC, not only am I the founder of that organization, but I feel uh, I have a lot of exposure to professionals throughout the world who come to these trainings and other workshops. And I get feedback that the IIQTC is among the more uh, credible of the tra training institutions. And that's, you know, that's very gratifying because that is our goal is to be a part of how Qigong and Tai Chi can be disseminated into the world uh, more, uh, more, more better. I like that phrase, more better, so that everybody can re be reached, not just the people who can afford it, but also the people who cannot afford it. So that's working through social service agencies, government agencies, and so forth. It's a very powerful experience. And you don't have to quit your job. You know, you can keep your job and warm this thing up and then quit. Or you may already have a job where they're looking for people to do this, like nurses and physical therapists and occupational therapists are all having the opportunity now to work in um, the part of the healthcare system that's getting it, that you can't just treat people with medicine and get away with it um, financially. The money's not in the system. You know, they're talking about basically depreciating um, Medicare. Why? Well, it's money. The people who run the show, they want, the, they want to put the money into the military. That's where they get their big buck. They want to put the money into their own pockets. So if we can save Medicare by being more healthy, then the cruel and greedy will have more money to disperse in other ways. <laughs> Sorry, that's... I am mad about this. You know, I don't be mad all the time, but I am mad about the fact that I live in a society that claims to be the most sophisticated society in the world that is withholding information from the public about how powerful they are relative to their well being and even their own life path. So this is just one of the people who came to the, one of these trainings. There's something warm and special and loving about the IIQTC tribe, call it professional community. I love being part of it. I love being in the presence of it. The resonance is like a warm embrace. These are some of your future colleagues, should, should you, uh, should you want to join us. As I already talked about all the different kinds of people who uh, have been to these trainings, uh, everything from doctors and lawyers 
to librarians and car salesmen and people who work in banks, everybody. So do not sell yourself short by saying, I don't think I can do that because we have bumped into someone from every walk of life who, who basically said, I changed my mind. I can do that. And I want to do that. And I want to be a part of how that happens. So wrapping up here, and then we'll have a few more Q and a little more Q and A if you want to. So to find the trainings, go to iiqtc.org. Also, I'm assuming that Rhonda has been putting the links for the East Coast train. The West Coast training is in March. The East Coast training is in April. The West Coast training is in the beautiful, inspiring redwoods of California. The East Coast training is in the beautiful, inspiring Berkshire Mountains of Massachusetts. Both of these venues are incredible. Then to get on a list to receive a note from us in follow-up <clears throat> on this event, this what we're doing right now, go to http colon slash slash iiqtc.org forward slash member and that will take you to the to the sign in for the membership site and over the next couple of days it might take a few days we will go and find out who registered for the membership site over you know now and in the in the next day or so and then we will send you the link or the replay or the recording of this um, of this time that we've had together. And then it's Q and A time. <clears throat> so I'm a little unsure because I started this without support, how to be able to do both share my screen and do Q and A. So I'm gonna just unshare. If you have a question, please raise your hand as we described. And then let me see if I can find, yeah, so the most recent questions are at the bottom. I don't see questions there. Oh, okay. Any Southern California level one trainings planned later this year or next? Uh, no, um, however, things you know, I mean, the world is a very dynamic uh, situation and things can change. But I will tell you this, uh, we, have, we have never done a level one in Santa Barbara. And here's why. Because people have to come all the way from the East Coast and you can't fly directly into Santa Barbara. And so, Getting here is a big, call it a schlep. <laughs> it's a big schlep. <clears throat> and so the people from the East Coast say, couldn't you do it on the East Coast? And then when we go to the East Coast, then people say, couldn't you do it on the West Coast? So we almost, almost always did these trainings in the middle. So Texas has been, actually, I know people have a thing about how Texas is a a problem but actually Austin Texas is amazing and we've done lots of trainings in Texas we've done some trainings in uh, near Denver which is more centrally located than usually you think we've done some trainings in Chicago and we've done some in um, Missouri at, near st. Louis in a place called Eureka <laughs> which is actually a very lovely uh, place so no I am so sorry, we are not going to be having, uh, and people ask all the time, oh, are you gonna do a training in Florida? Well, probably not. Or are you gonna do a training in Minnesota? Uh, I don't think so. Or are you gonna do a training in Maine? Uh, you know, are you gonna do a training in Nevada? No, so watch the calendar and see where the trainings actually are. Um, that's the best way to do it. Okay. So what about level two? 
Uh, that is a very excellent question. And um, the, uh, it's, it's a kind of like one of my least favorite questions because uh, we do not have a level two right now. And there is a, a process in play to uh, generate a level two. And to accomplish that, <clears throat> we have to fulfill a certain set of criteria. And we haven't fulfilled that set of criteria yet. Um, so level two is likely out ahead. But allow me to declare that, that level one is actually the one that most people get the most mileage out of. Why? Well, because Tai Chi level two is harder for people to learn. It's not harder to sell, by the way. And we have a phrase, and I, I don't know, there'd probably be somebody on the line who takes offense at this, but I'll say it anyway. And that is teach Qi Gong and call it Tai Chi. Teach Qi Gong and call it Tai Chi. What does that mean? Well, most people want to do something simple that, to help themselves. Tai Chi, even Tai Chi easy, is not that simple. Qi Gong is easier than Tai Chi easy. And so if you want something that you can bring to your community, if you want something that you can um, uh, grasp fairly easily and then transport into a teaching situation, remember, teach what you aspire to learn, then level one is going to serve you well. And we have a very high rate of people who go from level one to level two, but we also have a very high rate of people who say that um, what they usually teach is the material from level one. Um, so we'll leave it there for that. Okay, can we have an online training? <sighs> another of my least favorite questions. Um, you may know that I'm working with the SHIFT network. If you don't know about the SHIFT network, then go to the internet and put in to a Google search, the SHIFT network, and then go to courses. Courses, um, I'm doing a new course in a couple of days. And uh, we just finished a beautiful seven week course, which is available uh, under courses. But we do not call those trainings. Um, training is when you learn how to teach. So when we do an online course, um, so far, mostly it's with uh, the shift network, or remember I mentioned that the medical Qigong train, uh, library, the medical Qigong library, the healer within medical Qigong library, go to iiqtc.org, scroll down, you'll find a purple banner, and that banner will tell you uh, everything about, the, uh, about that course. And <clears throat> we have a discount available for you. So um, there are online courses, but there are not necessarily online trainings. Um, so there's that. And uh, let's see. Yes, Edward, good to, to see you again. Tai Chi, yep, mm -hmm. I also gong, yep, okay. Excellent outcome of my healing session. Always positive, positive healing sessions of my training and the support of the immortals. <laughs> I love that. Anybody who says the support of the immortals has studied into the origins of Qigong and Tai Chi to know what that means. And um, so we won't take time to explain it now. We met at Omega a few years ago. Yeah, and I look forward to seeing you again, Edward. Uh, Rhonda just put up the shift network course. Thank you very much, Rhonda. What is the difference between the two level one training sessions coming up? There is curriculum, no difference. Uh, the California one at 1440 is um, myself, 
co-training with um, two amazing trainers. Uh, you should be able to find information about them if you go down the page and it says faculty <clears throat> and then you can click on the bios of Henderson Smith and Jessica Colby and then in uh, at uh, Kripalu the training uh, the co-trainers are uh, Gail Hubach a the author of a beautiful book about Qigong, a doctor of Chinese medicine, and Deborah Adams, who is one of the most energetic people I've ever met, who owns a spa and teaches Qigong and Tai Chi all the time. And they are both extremely articulate. The other difference is, what about food? High quality food in both places, amazing what about lodging i would say the lodging at 1440 is a little bit more upscale but it's also going to be a little more expensive so if if money is an issue you could probably buy lodging and an air ticket to go to kripalu <clears throat> for around the same price that you can just buy lodging in the course at uh, 1440 but the curriculum is the same, the certification is the same, the community of professionals is the same, you know, and so forth. Access to the Facebook page is the same, access to the students and graduates uh, information center is the same. So everything's pretty much the same. Uh, are you playing a training in Santa Barbara? Uh, no. Uh, for, you know, you know, all the reasons that I just said. Uh, somebody says, uh, I really like what you're doing. Alan Brunel. Well, thank you, Alan. I appreciate that. <laughs> I like what I'm doing. Um, one of the things that I really love is being with people who are of like mind. So check this out. Very short story. As a doctor of Chinese medicine, I eventually retired because I was tired of being around people who didn't want to learn about taking care of themselves. Probably around 70% of the people who were in my practice were just saying like they would say to any doctor, just fix me up and get me out of here. And uh, in the beginning I was entertained because I love doing I, I love doing acupuncture, Chinese medicine. I love it. It's beautiful. It's very powerful. In my Tai Chi and Qigong classes, 100% of the people were interested in taking care of themselves. So I had 30% of people in my practice who are interested in taking care of themselves, and 100% of the people in my classes were interested in taking care of themselves. So it just eventually became a no-brainer. Why would I want to hang out with these people over here when these people over here are 100% in and enthusiastic and excited and inspired and motivated? So thank you for that. <clears throat> Okay, can you send me the PDF, the 43-page copy of this talk? Um, to the person who asked this question, would you ask that question again, please, <clears throat> and say a little bit more about what you mean? Uh, because... Um, I don't know what that means. Okay, where is the reunion in April? <clears throat> the reunion in April, which uh, is available, you're invited to if you're a graduate of our professional trainings. It is at the Ancient Yoga Center 
uh, near Austin, Texas. And I'm going to assume that Bob, who wrote that question, um, is one of our graduates. Okay, will you be offering another level one at Kripalu later this year? No, but it's very likely that we will have another level one at Kripalu next year at around the same time. Um, and I thank you for your interest, and I'm so sorry it's not more convenient for you. Yes, have we had any success teaching online classes? Well, that's the, that's the, uh, the work that we're doing with The Shift Network, so check that out. Um, I'm also a um, fellow at the uh, Fielding Graduate University, and they use those M-O-O-C-S, those MOOCs. Um, and we are developing some of that. We're working with an organization uh, to refine how we offer what we offer online and we may be able to do, but I mean, you can imagine that training people to teach Qigong and Tai Chi on a webcast is a, you know, it's pretty hard. Uh, is it possible to conduct trainings in India? Yes. In fact, we do conduct trainings in India. Typically it is a, uh, a program that we've developed with an organization called the Healer Within Foundation. So go to healerwithinfoundation.org, healerwithinfoundation.org, and contact that organization because they actually arrange for trainings in India, and um, and that's cool. I like that a lot. We want to we want to go everywhere. We want to train people to practice, and we want to train people as teachers to train people to practice. So that's great. Okay. Will there be another level one after the April one? Yes. Uh, we don't know when the very next one will be, but we're pretty sure that the there will be a next one in. In California and a next one in Massachusetts. Okay, Mike Craig has his hand up. Mike, you had your hand up and you took it down. That's great. Would you put it back? Would you, instead of um, instead of raising your hand, Mike Craig, would you write your <clears throat> message in the chat box? Because that's where I'm getting all the questions. Uh, someone says that they're on the Shift Network courses. That's great. What is the difference between the Shift Net Network courses and Level 1? There's a lot of differences, uh, but the main one is that uh, Level 1 is a training and Shift Network is a course or a workshop for which we do not uh, grant a, um, a certification because it's not a, it's not a professional training. It's not a teacher training. Would the training program be hard physically? That is a very good question. And the answer is overall no. And here's why. Because we train you to modify your classes for people who have compromises. So if you come to the training with a compromise, then you get to experience the class from the perspective of what is it like to come to class with a compromise, and then later when you're teaching, you'll know all about how to uh, work with people with compromises. And the difference is that uh, in one, uh, in the in the instance where a person is fairly well, they will probably do these practices standing. And then in the instance of a person who's less well, they will do these practices sitting. And everything in level one. Um, except for maybe like 3% of the practices can be done sitting. That was a great question. 
Um, Bonnie Kel Kellerman, if you're st still there, yes, thank you. Big cheek hug. So glad you came. Okay, I think we're there. All right. Our Gridley, who we couldn't, I couldn't lower his hand before for some reason. I'm taking both of the online. Oh, okay. So we answered that question. I'm taking both of the online courses with the shift network. And the difference is that they are not trainings. Uh, we, we, we are in a kind of dynamic relationship with the shift network. And there is the possibility that we may, you know, and what does that mean? What does may mean? It's like saying s maybe or sometime or eventually even eventually suggests that it's going to happen. Well, we're not too eventually. We're too uh, dynamic, engaged interactivity with no predictable future, except for the fact that there's a, uh, a new course happening very soon, which is not a training course, uh, but it, it, will, it will be definitely a, a, you know, a beautiful course. And I can see that uh, Rhonda, Put, if you scroll up a little bit from Rhonda, everyone, there's the Shift Network course there. Okay, so wrapping up. <clears throat> oh, wait a minute. Mike Craig, you didn't write your question. So if you don't write your question, I can't answer it. Uh, Phyllis in New Orleans, um, write your question. I think I saw something from someone in New Orleans. Um, Phyllis thrilled that you're here. And um, Helen Bet Givargas, Bet Helen Bet Givargas, please uh, write your question in the uh, in the box there. Oh, I see. Um, from Fred, it says, I think the person means the 43 pages of the slideshow. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, when we post this, uh, we will probably not post the um, the slides, but we will post the video. So all the slides will be there. Okay. Thank you for everybody who's you know hanging in there. I think we're gonna we're gonna conclude now. And, and, and thank you for your patience. I know that because I'm, uh, you know, doing this all myself, I, I didn't have the benefit of, of, of support in, in the way that I would have been able to understand how the support was happening. And thank you so much, Rhonda, for the support that you've provided for um, putting the links in. So, you know, at the end of these interviews, they always say, well, what is, what's the last word? You know, what's the last idea that you have? And I think the last idea that I would say is the power is not somewhere. The power is here. So our job isn't to run around trying to find the power. The power is to reveal to ourself our natural self. That is the point of what we call training people to be Qigong and Tai Chi teachers, to support those teachers in, and practice leaders in being able to help people in their community while they're helping themselves. So don't forget, you know, you're allowed to help yourself. You know, the great phrases are, uh, my mom always said, at least, God helps those who help themselves. And um, we also know the phrase, how can you help someone else if you haven't taken care of yourself? And so we're going to teach you to teach others that the most profound medicine that's ever been produced in the history of the human race is produced within the human system for no cost. And that is political, it's socioeconomic, it's patriotic, it's spiritual, it's inspiring, 
<laughs> and it's fun. So, wow, I look forward to meeting you. And thank you so much for being here today. This has been a real pleasure for me. I love to just say all those things to people who are eager to hear them. And so um, many, many blessings to you. And I look forward to meeting you soon. And so we're gonna, we're gonna wrap this meeting up if I can find my cursor. It's, uh, <laughs> I have got myself so lost. Uh, I, you're class dismissed. <laughs> and I'll see if I can figure out how to. Uh, there we go. Many blessings, good friends. Thank you so much for your interest and your may all find peace.